Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Profiles in Risk. I am your host, Nick Lamparelli. As you can see uh, on the on the video screen, my guest this week is Chris Stanley, who's the leader. What are you, CEO? What's your founder? I do founder. King? I can't say CEO. I can't. King. Say CEO. Okay. No, no, no. Founder, founder. Uh, of IA Path, and this is a special episode because uh, Chris is now a two-time author. So this episode is geared towards his new book, The Independent Adjuster's Playbook. Chris, good morning. Morning, Nick. I appreciate you taking the time out uh, for all the technical hurdles and for uh, just giving me time to even come on here and talk to your audience today. Yeah, we won't even talk about the technical hurdles. Oh, we'll, it's okay. Though. Yeah, it's yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let the audience kind of use their imagination of uh, we're just pros, what know? we just stumbled into. But you are on a boat, so there could be all kinds of technical issues. Uh, where, where are you located? Right now, Fort Pierce, Florida. Okay, so how did the how did the hurricane affect you? Absolutely none. We uh, got about twenty mile an hour a few days, and it was fantastic. Blew all the mosquitoes away. Uh, but other than that, Michael didn't do anything to us, thankfully. But you know, obviously, other people were not so fortunate. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we are talking about adjusting. We are talking about your new book. Uh, let's let's get the elevator pitch. What's El what's in the, what's in the new book? Well, let's just start with a title and subtitle, which I think will sum it up best, which is the Independent Adjuster's Playbook. It's a step-by-step -step guide and roadmap to how to become a successful independent adjuster. So that would be the elevator pitch, title and subtitle all in one. Okay, so why did you feel the need to write a second book? Well, the first book was truly um, a brain dump almost. I had come off of working in the paintless dent repair area. For those who don't know what that is, that's basically fixing hail damaged vehicles. So the people who are fixing the vehicles that are getting damaged, I was working as a manager in that arena. And I had come away with this massively expanded knowledge over the last five years, left the industry, kind of got the feeling I might not be going back directly to that. And I had a lot of people all of a sudden who are interested in learning about that industry as I started IPATH. And I knew the knowledge I had at that time was the sharpest it'd ever be. So I had to brain dump it into a book, into a course and everything. And that was the hail adjusters playbook. Well, come a year later, pl year plus later, uh, the number one question I get in my inbox every week is how do I become an independent adjuster? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about cars. They don't care about hail. They don't care about flood. What they care about is them succeeding. And what I realized was I was talking to what they needed to do but they didn't know what they needed to do. So I was saying, hey, you need to, be, to do auto adjusting to get started easier. But I had never bridged that gap because they're saying independent adjuster. How do I get started? How do I become yep. successful? Yep. It, and I was handing them the next step, not the first step. And so this book was the answer to that question I kept getting over and over and over, which is what are the right steps to take? How do I get started? How do I quit waiting around and just wasting all my time, effort, energy, and money? And so I dug in and I started creating a roadmap. It started off as an as a opt-in email PDF. Nick, you know all about those. And mm -hmm. just like something easy I could give away. And I realized as I was mapping it out that there was so much to it that it would be hard to give a one page and go, here you go, and then leave them at that. So I started researching and really diving in and going, I got to take this seriously. So I went through all my interviews I did on the podcast went through back in my memory through all the conversations I'd ever had and said, what has people told me about their steps that they took? And I would write them all out. So Jeremy Shaw's story, Sean Parsons story, and what and type it out, type my story out and everybody's stories out. And then what were the commonalities, right? And then I started putting down the roadmap of either what I did or what I would go back and do based on all that information. So is, is the, the playbook as well, are you more heavily focused or entirely focused on auto? It is, um, this book does start you in auto with a very clear explanation and intention that um, there was 17,732 adjusters licensed in Texas last year, in 2017. Every website you go to online says to start in property. And so when I read that and I see that, that there's 17,000 people licensed, that's, you know, staff adjusters, all that, all lines licensing. 
it's not just independents, but that's a lot of adjusters in one out of 50 states. So you're competing in catastrophe on a mass scale here. Sure. Um, that I was like, wow, if they're all reading the same thing, go start in property. How do we shortcut that? And that's why so many of us who have had success started in auto was because we weren't competing where everybody else was competing. We got in a different, shorter, less competitive line. So that is the only reason we tell you to start in auto is this is the shortcut, the easier way to get started, not necessarily the most profitable on the long run, but this is how you get your name established. And now if you want to go to property, once your name's established and people know you and trust you, it's a whole lot easier. Okay. So you must have had a, a use case or two in mind of um, a potential reader. Who's, mm -hmm. what, what's, who's the best audience for this book? Best audience for this book, ideally, it was written for the people, two different things. One, it was written for people that I just felt horrible about in their stories, um, like who have been chasing it for two years, got their license, spinning their wheels, and they're doing everything they're being told to do, but what they're being told to do isn't giving them the best odds of success. Because, again, they're getting in the back of the line against tens of thousands of people. Bad odds. But the ideal reader is the person who goes, like maybe even Nick, he says, I might want to get an independent adjusting. I am sick of being an agent or maybe I'm done being a plumber and I want to transition or I'm a bartender. And I want to transition to being an independent adjuster. What is it that I need to know? What are the steps I need to take that'll actually uh, help me align myself with a successful career from the start without wasting time, effort, energy, and money. That's the ideal reader. The one who's thinking this is right. If they start here, they're going to understand the industry way better, even if they don't follow my advice. Yeah. So aside from not buying your book, what's the <laughs> biggest mistake that someone getting into independent adjusting makes? Or what's, what's, a, what's a common myth? You know, something that you see over and over again that's just like, that's just plain wrong. Same thing you see, Nick, in the agency biz, which is, I've got a license. I passed my test. I should get work now, right? Like I'm set, I'm ready to go. So most people, once they get their adjuster license, they think that they are ready and that they should just be able to raise their hand and go make six figures or go make $60,000 and just be set. But the reality is as an independent adjuster, just like in a lot of agencies that you're running your own agency, you're an independent business owner. And so you have to establish your business or create it is phase one of the roadmap is how do you create your business? Then phase two is how do you promote your business? How do you go out and tell people in my analogy that you bake cakes so that you make uh, estimates and you write claims and you handle claims and inspect claims. And then phase three is how do you expand that business? So how do you go from getting your first claim to now being busy year round? So really, to me, there's those three phases, but that's the biggest mistake is people not treating it like a business. Yeah. I, I remember like in my 20s, um, being excited to take the stockbroker's exam, Series 7, mm -hmm. and taking it, passing it, and then feeling very upset that um, people weren't calling me up, you know? Not uh, so, yeah. Um, it's a business. It's uh, you have to market yourself. You have to prospect. You have to. You, I mean, that's that's a, the the license only gives you only makes it legal for you to do that. Exactly. And how I kind of frame it in the book the whole time is that it's easy for us to understand when we put it off of ourselves. A lot of times when we look at it from our own lens, you know, we're seeing dimly, right? We're seeing very narrow focus. But if you imagine the baker, who says, "I'm going to start a bakery," and he goes and he says, "Okay." I'm going to go get the legal documents that allow me to have a bakery in, you know, the state of Florida or in the city of Fort Myers, Florida or whatever. That's great. But nobody knows, you know, how to bake cakes and you can't prove to anybody, you know, how to make cakes at this point. You have nothing. You're just legal. And so you've got to get to those other points in the journey. Otherwise, no one will ever pay you a dollar because they don't even know you exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so from book one to book two. What did you learn? What was, uh, was it easier this time? It was much easier, not necessarily because of book one, but there was some technological hurdles like getting onto Amazon and all that was, that made it easier the second time around. But really the big thing I learned was the first time I didn't really understand my goal other than the brain dump, but this one coming into it, like, no, I've got to provide a proven roadmap and strategy. All of a sudden it was like, 
once I did all the research and I started seeing it and really understanding the focus of it, it was like, it, it just fell into place. It was really a lot simpler. It was just the drudge of typing it out and editing it and rearranging things. But ultimately the thing was just to, no matter who you are, if you're going to write a book or a course or anything is understanding that elevator pitch, that, that one step-by-step -step guide to becoming a success, successful independent adjuster. You can't say that that short. You don't know what you're writing about. And in the end, you're not going to be able to communicate it clearly. Okay. Well, how do people get their hands on this book? Well, it's pretty simple. There's two different ways. I'll give you the easy way, which is my preferred way because I make more money through it. But it's the IAplaybook.com. You can go to IAplaybook.com. And I'm going to give away. It's going to go. It's going to sit right above my fingers. IAplaybook.com. And uh, we give away the physical edition completely free. And we're very open as to why. You pay the shipping. And then we offer you some other great independent adjuster goodies afterwards. So if you decide you want those, then that's where we make additional income. But for me, it's best to just give it away. But if you're an Amazon person, you love reading on Kindle, and maybe you don't want to wait for something to ship, then you can go to Amazon. And it'll be out October 17th. So probably by the time this episode goes live, It'll be out in the Amazon ebook store. I'll have both links available on the show notes. So even though I'm pointing up and I'll have the link above my finger, again, magic of video, uh, you can just go on the show notes and click to both to get to the book. Uh, I will also put Chris's contact information if you have any questions about Chris, IA Path, uh, book one, book two. We'll have it all there on the show notes. So, Chris, uh, I, I, I think we got a winner here. Uh, we're, we're a fan of insurance nerds because we want to make sure that our audience knows everything that's available. And as my good friend John Bachman says, claims is the place to be. You know, For him, for a lot of people, claims is the place to be. And for I think for a lot of those folks that's, that drift or have some kind of attraction towards claims, uh, some of those people are going to be entrepreneurial and they're going to want to start their own business. And you're the man, you're the guy that I always point to uh, for those folks that want to lean in that direction. So uh, we'll put all the information in the show notes and, uh, and enjoy your time or enjoy your beautiful view in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. And just so everyone understands uh, when you go start to check it out, this is a somewhat controversial book. It's not by the book. It's not what you're going to see other places. So when you dive into it, uh, I've even had people like uh, Matthew Allen of Adjuster TV. He uh, sent him a pre-read copy and he was like, dude, you're saying they should do what? Like, you're saying this is the normal way of thinking and it's wrong. That's what I tell them to do. And then he gets through the book and he's like, dude, brilliant. Freaking love it. So it's controversial. It's out there. It's not the normal roadmap you're going to find anywhere else. So if you come into it, just understand I'm coming at it from a di completely different angle, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, so understand that going into it, that you might talk to other people and they go, that's ridiculous. You shouldn't do that. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't, but I bet if you read the book, I will have you convinced by the end of what you need to do. What's the point of advice if there's no drama associated with it? Yeah, I so controversy. I, I have a feeling though, uh, contro controversial to you is probably a little bit different than controversial to other people, but I'll let them read the book and, uh, and, and see what the adjuster controversy is all about. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, awesome, Chris. Um, everything's in the show notes, everyone. So thanks for uh, spending a few minutes with Chris and myself uh, to hear about IA Path and, and the book. Uh, go to the links in the show notes and uh, and appreciate it so until next time peace out